and uh, welcome to the um, first um, layer one to three uh, virtual conference. Uh, my name is Sven Freudenfeld. Um, I'm uh, part of the uh, uh, LANA team, um, the uh, CTO of the Telecom Application Business Unit. And uh, today we wanted to uh, go over some of the uh, uh, use cases where white boxes are being used for disaggregating the network. And uh, I will also give a bit of an insight of the current status on the different applications and use cases uh, in, this, uh, in this regard. Ultimately, um, uh, the uh, overall network transformation uh, will uh, show multiple areas for the use case of uh, white boxes. Um, we have been investing uh, in the SD1 space, as you can see on the, on the bottom right, um, for you know, over the last four years. Traditionally, uh, uh, our company is uh, an ODM partner for many of the network security companies, and we have um, uh, created a, uh, um, a platform approach to really disaggregate the uh, hardware from the software, specifically for uh, universal CPEs, universal, universal customer premise equipment, but also for SD1. And, and all these platforms are intended to be operating in a white box mode, meaning um, it's a, an open platform uh, to support multiple VNFs and multiple software partners onto this platform. So um, that's the initial uh, uh, approach. Uh, for the last couple of months, we uh, see the demand for LT and Wi-Fi and the requirements to be uh, included into the platform approach. And um, um, I have a couple of examples where I will go into, uh, into a bit deeper um, following the, uh, the, the, the sessions. The next level where we see um, uh, a disaggregated approach is taking place is around the uh, access technology. So meaning, you know, um, either the uh, distributed um, uh, units or also the centralized units for uh, cloud run or open run um, deployments. And these platforms have specific requirements, primarily uh, in terms of the uh, support for um, precision time protocol, for example, um, but also for uh, the need for uh, acceleration. So not only an x86 approach, but also uh, uh, acceleration for either an FPGA or a GPU workload. And um, they also been limited in terms of space. So um, they are, um, there are specific requirements what we uh, uh, consider as a white box as well to uh, to do deployments for um, for open run but also for cloud run and the, uh, cloud run um, the next level beyond that is really the service provider edge and the service provider edge is providing the aggregation um, it's coming out of from a um, an sd1 device or universal cp device and basically aggregating with traffic um, as an aggregation point, and these platforms typically require sort of a network infrastructure for networking um, and compute uh, acceleration and storage at the same time. So these are, you know, some of the key areas we want to focus here in this uh, in this uh, uh, presentation. So SD One is uh, no longer a hype. It's been uh, uh, very successful, uh, especially now during COVID-19. It's actually more uh, a business model, which is considered by service providers to bring managed services to the, uh, to the enterprise. And uh, of course, there are different uh, directions to do the deployment. Uh, traditionally, it was either a gray box or a, um, a black box uh, for customer premise equipment. This trend is moving towards a fully open um, uh, platform for deploying multiple applications as a uh, virtual network function on the customer promise equipment. Um, and the, the trend here is to have a multi-vendor scenario. That means that uh, ultimately you have, a, in some cases for universal CPE, you have an orchestrator 
and the orchestrator then basically brings in the uh, virtual network functions for networking, uh, but also for uh, enterprise applications for, let's say, unified communications, um, and so on. So the unique uh, thing here is that, you know, most of the platforms are moving towards the deployment model of using uh, 4G LTE devices built into it, uh, sometimes even uh, dual LTE support for multiple carriers. Um, but also a big demand for universal CPE devices will be the 5G strategy for 5G devices um, besides Wi-Fi. Um, of course, uh, these platforms are multi-core platforms, uh, meaning that, you know, we're running multiple applications at the same time. But um, uh, the fact is that it's not any given kind of platform. So a lot of hype is that it's very, you know, it's very cost sensitive. The hardware always gets, is getting squeezed by the end of the day uh, in order to, to deploy it. These are usually large deployments uh, most of the time. Um, however, uh, not any server platform will be suitable for that. Um, and I give you a couple of examples because, you know, typically you have sort of a multi-core CPU, but it's not only the CPU what counts. The, in this platform, there's also elements for trusted platform management for security aspects or a board management controller also for managing the platform. In um, with these universal CPEs or SD1 devices, the challenge is that these devices will be deployed somewhere uh, in multiple, uh, many locations. And that means that once deployed, the intent is uh, to do zero touch provisioning. But there are multiple aspects um, uh, on the platform layer. It's, so it's not only that you're providing a virtual firewall to the enterprise, but the whole security aspect on the platform itself uh, can contain uh, multiple loopholes if you don't choose the right platform. Uh, an example is that, you know, all this platform have devices for, you know, multiple devices and firmware options. And these firmware options uh, and BIOS options, if they are not uh, chosen properly, they can become a vulnerability for your enterprise or for the managed services you try to deploy. So, and uh, the platform has been built that we can um, uh, eliminate these concerns by using a, a full-fledged BIOS, which has all the security features built in um, for uh, the security aspect. But also it's, it's a, um, a managed uh, BIOS infrastructure. So it's not an open source what we've been using. Uh, it's, it's, so it's fully validated and tested. Keep in mind, we're coming from a security aspect, we're building security appliances. We have the expertise to do that and we build it all into the white box approach. And the second aspect is, you know, how do we manage with different firmware uh, elements in this platform and the security of the firmware of all the different devices built into the platform. So that's a very important aspect to consider when choosing the right white box. Uh, approach. And, you know, what we've been uh, uh, developing and, and rolling out to the market is multiple scalable platforms. So from a small, uh, medium, large and extra large, you know, you have different options on that um, uh, for deployment. For an example, the lowest end, the small one comes in different flavors, all the way up to, to 16 cores. We are premier partner with Intel and we will update these platforms as processes becoming available. Um, and of course, deploying a new uh, universal CPE and SD1 um, is not uh, without the partners. So we have a, a broad uh, ecosystem with uh, partners who are deploying either universal CPE or SD1s and they are you know, primarily a software company. Um, uh, operating on white boxes. So we're doing validation and testing and qualification with these partners to roll out these uh, with services um, with, uh, in a, with, a short, uh, with a short period of time uh, to bring the service providers to revenue quick. Um, a few examples here we, um, we see here is one, uh, I picked one of them, uh, it's, it's ADVA. Uh, one of our close partners in the, in the ecosystem. And you can see this is really an example for cloud retail uh, deployment. 
So you can see that, you know, the challenge here is that um, when you do a, when you send the platform to a, a retail location, there is no IT personnel uh, available. Most of the time, um, uh, it it will be a, it will be shipped connected to a to some of the um, uh, infrastructure, including the point of sale support and all of that. So the important thing here is that the, the critical path is when we look at zero touch provisioning, for example, it, for the retail itself, uh, if the point of sales is going down because of net, lack of networking or lack of connectivity, then that, uh, that means loss of revenue for that retail location. And same thing is uh, applicable for you know, surveillance and, 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 and Wi-Fi support for the given location. So, um, uh, so it's very critical, it's very important to choose the right underlying hardware to make sure that you know, all these elements are being uh, validated. Uh, so it, there is no uh, bad experience for deploying into these uh, retail locations. Um, in, this, in this case, we also done a full certification for Verizon ODI, but also for uh, PTCRB, so it's, it's ready to go. Um, we have a short uh, turnaround time to actually go into a live, uh, live deployment. The second one is uh, another part of ours, uh, same thing, small, medium business, branches and retail. Um, it's, uh, it's really the combination of uh, orchestrator and deploying with, with, uh, VNFs. Um, on the same type of hardware. Um, same thing, it's fully validated and certified uh, for Verizon ODI, but also for PTCR. What we do different, we have done a significant investment in uh, our universal CPEs as well in SD1. Uh, we've gone the extra step, a mile, um, to actually provide products which are already pre-certified uh, and tested. And so we created multiple SKUs or options um, with our partners to be deployed instantly without the need to wait for nine months before the certification is uh, taking place. We can actually shorten that deployment model uh, rapidly. So that means you can go instantly into services um, using these white boxes as a white box approach. Overall, what we see in the market is we have about, uh, about you know, we see a, in our revenue basically from a traditional network security revenue compared to the SD1 and universal CPE um, revenue, we see about 20% of the overall revenue. 66% remains for traditional network security, but we see an uptake. Um, and then primarily the biggest uptake is, is in the Americas, um, followed by uh, Asia Pacific and then EMEA. And, you know, I'm proud to say that, you know, Gardner has identified us in 2019 that we cover 55% of the market, uh, which choose uh, Velana appliances for that. The next, what, next area of the white box approach is really what I had mentioned earlier, um, the open run or SD run deployment, which means we have uh, distributed um, units, but also centralized units. And there are two different areas. So, um, on the distributed units, there are specific requirements for uh, PTP or uh, IEEE 1588. On the centralized unit, it's really the, 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 the matter of uh, scalability. Um, so we, we have created a portfolio uh, specifically for as white boxes, which cover both areas for the DU, but also for the CU. Um, and there's a separate uh, um, uh, presentation which covers the uh, Open RAN initiative uh, where I'm on the panel. But we, we have been identified Open RAN as one of the uh, use cases for white boxes. And the interesting thing here is uh, from a requirement point of view, besides the, uh, the timing and the uh, PTP access, there are also um, potentially requirements for uh, an underlying P4 network infrastructure. So P4, if you're not familiar with it, P4 is a, it's an interface for, for the SDN uh, infrastructure. And the P4 uh, runtime is, provides um, the framework for a, um, a programmable network. 
and that means that you know we with the capabilities in those platforms we can uh, bring in uh, network telemetry but also uh, programmability to all uh, the different aspects in the network so you can see from uh, uh, you, you, you have uh, most likely a, a coexisting between 4G LTE and 5G at the, at the, at the, at the RAN site. Um, and um, uh, so you can uh, gradually introduce the uh, uh, separations between CU and DU um, as, a, as a distributed appliance, but also as a centralized appliance. And then move up the stack uh, using uh, another white box approach for deploying virtual CP EPC, uh, which service gateways, but also uh, um, signaling gateway, but also a packet gateway. Um, 1588 uh, is becoming a, a critical aspect on that. Um, so we see that, um, you know, not only the, the introduce, introduction of the time uh, uh, PTP options uh, in the header is not only at the uh, cell site gateway, it can also be uh, re a requirement at the, at the distributed unit. Um, so we ha actually have the capability as an option built into the platform. Um, it also has a specific um, uh, depth uh, just to be mounted into a, into a, into a, a, a cell site. Um, and um, so these are also elements to consider when you uh, uh, look at deploying open run or, or virtual run. And then the next level beyond that is really uh, the service provider edge. And we have created a platform which contains uh, net network programmability, networking, uh, computing, storage, and acceleration. So basically that's becoming the sort of a white box uh, to service provider edge Bringing it all, bringing it, it all together. So we have our retail locations of the branches for SD1 Universal CPEs, which then, or you know, from a from a cable operator aspects, you know, setup boxes, which really getting into the same edge compute platform uh, to be aggregated, and then you know, um, deploying either virtual BNG, which is broadband network gateway. Which is load balancer, which is firewall, which is provider edge, which is EPC, and so on. So what we do different here is we integrating switching um, uh, and networking into the same uh, platform uh, in addition to compute, uh, and it's all software defined. So it's all internal connectivity um, without the need of a top of rack. Uh, switching. If you are not familiar with P4, uh, I encourage to read up on the P4 initiative. Uh, it, it provides a lot of uh, differentiator, especially at the edge. Um, no traffic is as dynamic as uh, network traffic at the on the edge compute side. Um, it can also provide a framework for Sigmund routing um, for Sigmund routing v6, and there is a, a part of ours. Uh, Noviflow has. Uh, or is presenting a, a use case with a service provider Bell Canada, how this can be leveraged uh, in the deployment of a network using uh, segment routing uh, v6. Um, and then, so this is the large platform, you know, as I said, we bring in, uh, we're providing pro uh, a programmable edge. We have better visibility by introducing network telemetry, but also it's scalable uh, on, on that end. A uh, couple of use cases we can see here, as I mentioned, we can deploy multiple virtual network functions at either a multi-dwelling unit or, or even a, a, a central office redesign as data center. Um, this could be, uh, you know, uh, leveraging the internal connectivity with multiple hundred gigs to the back plane using a programmable switch fabric um, and, uh, and allows the SDM framework to be um, uh, uh, provisioning tool with zero touch provisioning. So, you know, big difference, we, we save a lot of truck roll. Uh, there is no need uh, for, for cabling and wiring uh, on site. Um, the internal uh, connectivity, so, you, you know, you will have this document uh, available for download, also passed by our booth. Uh, we have some people there virtually, um, and, uh, but it's giving you a quick snapshot on you know how this uh, platform has been architectured 
um, including you know all the different framework, including the manageability aspect on that. So um, feel free to pass by and uh, we'll uh, give you a bit more insights on that. Ultimately, bottom line is you know this kind of approach is, as a converged Mac platform is saving a lot of cost uh, in terms of operations, space, and power. Um, and that, you know, we consider that as a white box, which can host multiple VNFs, uh, similar as a, or let's say it as a mini data center at the edge for multi-axis edge computing. So this concludes my uh, presentation. Um, uh, if there are any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly or contact us at uh, contact at lanainc.com. Mm -hmm.